Hello scholars, welcome to today's Manuscript Spotlight. Today, we'll be looking at the Samuel Scroll, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls that has shed some light on a previously confusing passage. A few days ago, a friend asked me about my Papyrus 46 video, and if anything in that very early manuscript caused any changes in what we might see in our Bibles today. I think this is an excellent question. While the manuscript does have about 11 translatable deviations from what we now know as the standard text across its over 200 pages, most of which are probably due to scribal error, the short answer is that no, that papyrus matches later manuscripts very closely, and the deviations are inconsequential. However, this brings up an important point about the transmission of biblical manuscripts that I want to address. Many people, including myself at one point, Think of the transmission of biblical manuscripts like a chain, where scribes or monks copy manuscripts from generation to generation, compounding errors like a game of telephone. However, the reality is that these manuscripts were passed on in something more like a web through interconnected communities, where manuscripts would be checked against one another to find and eliminate scribal errors. There is an entire field of science known as textual criticism that is devoted to reconstructing original texts based on the knowledge we have now. Fortunately, early Christians were prolific in both copying manuscripts and quoting the Bible in their own writings, leaving us with a wealth of knowledge with which to reconstruct the original texts. This is why ancient manuscripts that are newly found match the manuscripts we already have so well. However, this isn't true 100% of the time. There are rare instances when a manuscript error is transmitted to many future manuscripts, and it's only after finding even earlier manuscripts that we can detect this error, as the fascinating example I want to talk about today illustrates. The Dead Sea Scrolls were first found in the Qumran region of Israel in 1946, when shepherds discovered scrolls, written between the 3rd and 1st century BC, stored in jars inside the caves at Qumran. Twelve caves have been discovered at Qumran so far, with thousands of scroll fragments that predate the next latest Hebrew manuscripts by roughly 1,000 years. Approximately 40% of these scrolls are copies of the Hebrew scriptures, 30% are non-canonical or apocryphal texts, and 30% are previously unknown sectarian texts. The Samuel scroll, found at Qumran, includes about three lines that aren't included in later manuscripts and that shed some light on a puzzling story in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 11 includes a slightly confusing story where Nahash the Ammonite besieges the Israelite city of Jabesh Gilead and demands to gouge out the right eyes of all the men of the city, seemingly out of nowhere. This kind of punishment was normally reserved for rebellion, but there's no mention of rebellion anywhere in the passage, and the city of Jabesh Gilead is outside the territory of Ammon anyway. The passage in question is contained in 4Q51, plate 1096, fragment 6. I've included a link to this fragment in the description, which can be viewed in either full-spectrum color or infrared, which looks like a black-and-white image. The infrared is much easier for me to read, so that's what I'll be using today. Also, bear in mind that this is a fragment, and some of the text is missing. I'll be using the Reading and Completion by F.M. Cross, which I've linked to in the description. A final note before I start reading. As I mentioned in my Aleppo Codex video, the text you'll find in a modern Tanakh known as the Masoretic Text, is composed of letters, vowel marks, and cantillation marks. However, the vowel and cantillation marks were added around the Middle Ages by the Masoretes, a Jewish scribal group. Earlier texts, such as this one, written around 50 BC, only include letters that mark consonants. As a result, the vocalization I'm using is somewhat theoretical. Here we have the ending of 1 Samuel 10:27. And below, we pick up the new passage. V'nachash melech b'nei Amon hu lachatz et b'nei Gad v'et b'nei Reuben b'chazaka v'nakar laham kol ein yamin v'natan ema v'pachad al Yisrael v'lo nashar Ish b'bnei Yisrael asher b'ever hayareden asher lo nakar lu nachash melech b'nei Amon kol ein yamin rak shevat alafaim ish. 
Here a line was skipped, and you can see it was squeezed in here. Vayhi, kamo, chadash, v'ya'al, nachash, ha'amoni, v'yachan, al yavish, gilad. Nus, mipane, bene, amon, v'yabo, el yavish, gilad. V'yamaru, kol, enashe, Yavesh el Nachash. And the next line continues with the standard for Samuel 11. Now for the translation. En Nahash, king of the Ammonites, the Nachash, Melech, Bene Amon, sorely oppressed the Gadites and Reubenites, who lachats et Bene Gad, the et Bene Ruben, Bechazaka. And he gouged out the Nakar Laham, all their right eyes, Kol Ain Yamin, and struck terror and dread in Israel. The Natan Ema, the Pachad Al Yisrael. There is not left one among the Israelites, the Lo Nashar Ish Babane Yisrael Asher in Transjordan. But Ever Hayarden, whose right eye was not gouged out by Nachash, king of the Ammonites. Asher lo Nakar, lu Nachash, Melech, Bene Amon, Kol Ain Yamin. Only seven thousand men, Rak Shevat Alafaim Ish, fled from the Ammonites. Nus Mipane, Bene Amon and entered Jabesh Gilead, the Yabo El Yavish Gilad. Here the scribe goes back to fill in the line that he skipped. About a month later, Vaihi Kamo Chadash, Nahash the Ammonite went up, the Ya'al Nahash Ha'amoni, and besieged Jabesh Gilead, the Yachan Al Yavish Gilad. Continuing down on the line below. And all the men of Jabesh said to Nahash, Vayamaru kol enashe yavesh el Nahash. And here the standard text of 1 Samuel 11 picks back up. What this additional context shows is that Nahash had been gouging out the eyes of the Transjordan Israelites of Gad and Manasseh, and he was going to do the same to Jabesh Gilead, since they were harboring refugees who had fled from Nahash. Most Dead Sea Scrolls scholars believe this passage was omitted by mistake when the scribe's eye jumped from the first instance of Nahash to the second, cutting out the introductory passage in a common scribal error known as haplography. I should note that, as with most topics, this opinion is not uniform across scholars, with some holding that this was a later addition to the passage and wasn't included in the original text of 1 Samuel. However, it seems that the weight of evidence points to the additional context being original, this extra passage is even started to be included in updated Bible translations, such as the NRSV. I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at a groundbreaking manuscript. Thank you for watching, and thank you to Nathan for the question that inspired this video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know, and I might answer them in a future video. I'll see you again on the next Manuscript Spotlight.